Oh, where do I begin? Well, oh, hello, folks. Welcome. For I am the one, the only Hobo Tom. And I'm here to, to actually make a special video. Um, I do apologize for being a couple days behind. I have to make my New Year's Day Madness match for the Daytona Beach, Daytona Beach Bump Fight. No, I don't want to call. For the Daytona Beach Bump Fight. Like, that has to go up tonight. Um, so this is my video for AEW. Wait, let me show video evidence. There we go. These will be posted sometime. AEW. And it was pretty cool. There's Cody Rhodes. A horrible picture. Looks like he's behind bars. Well, he is behind bars. Cody. Awesome Kong! Oh, wow. She is the sweetest woman ever. Thank you so much, Awesome Kong. You're the best. You're one of the best. There she is. She's really cool, though. There she is giving some her autograph to some kid. That's the best. Um, the hangman, Adam Page. Wait, wait, no, wrong Adam. And of course, Jake Hagar. He's he was actually really cool too. So, and I think this is like random people back there. You, you can tell we're separated because there's a gate there. And of course, the reason why you know it's AEW, AEW. The production truck. I have to figure out what's going to be my thumbnail for this video. But I'm here to talk about AEW. The reason why I didn't do a review last night is because I actually went to the live show. So this is going to be a complete omnibus AEW for New Year's Day. New beginning. And wow, what seats. Um, let's see here. A couple notes about the whole thing. Where was Nolo King? I know you're out there somewhere, Nolo King. There were a couple known suspects from Discord and or other wrestling events out there. I think Nolo King's like exclusively for NXT. That's snob. But whoa, what seats? I think I was six rows from ringside. Don't ask me how I got those folks. I can't imagine, because even I can't imagine that. I would have been satisfied sitting in like the cheap seats. Honestly, the seats I had were utterly amazing, as you'll see by all the videos. All the videos. So, I'm just waiting to get my copyright strike. I don't even care. Actually, it should be, a, should be enough interjection where it shouldn't be that bad now that I think about it. Actually, I'm going to do this too while I talk. Because, I actually, <laughs> it's funny because I went there and here's my video recording device. I actually managed to go through two whole batteries. So I'm going to charge you up. I need you for later tonight. Or at least when I make... There we go. How do I put this in? I didn't realize that these batteries were so expensive, too. It's not bad. I think it lasted eight years before I realized I need a new battery. So I drained two batteries. That tells you how many videos I made. Um, a couple comments about AEW. One, it tends to be more more family friendly than the Daytona Beach NXT crowd. Still, with that being said, Jacksonville. It's a very kind of non typical wrestling crowd. Very Daytona Beachish. Still. It's just more friendly family. And the reason why I say it's a ton of beach because there's, there's always the, the hooker there. Oh, I'm sorry. Stripper. Yeah, they're strippers. No, no. In Jacksonville, there are call girls. In Daytona Beach, they are hookers. So, and I saw one at the gas station when I was. I wanted to get my little snack before I had to wait the DMV. And, yep. One of them there. And I can tell. Uh, so with that, I think the big thing with this is that the crowd was pretty lively. Ooh, ooh they're going to Tampa. No, that's only yeah, that's a three-hour ride. I'll get back to Matt later. Yeah, that's not bad.
No, not six. I want five. Right. No, not tight. Not fight. Right. I four. Yeah, it's just right. So with that, um, the crowd, they kind of trickled in. It was, it was pretty cool. I think the one thing I wanted to see, because I've heard about this, and my suspicions were confirmed, the crowd was hot. They were loud. They were active. I had a friend that I was texting, and he's like, yeah, dude, the crowd seems dead. I'm like, no, it's not. Like, oh, they must. It, I actually do think they mute the crowd for TV. They would have some cool stuff, like they had uh, signs. Uh, you can put up your signs. Next time I'm making a sign that says Hobo Tom. Hobo Tom fears Cody. Cody fears Hobo Tom. MGF fears Hobo Tom. <laughs> oh, that would get me on TV, all right. I got kicked out of the arena, too. Uh, one of the things that was unique, and they probably do this for safety reasons, is that they did not allow cans or bottles into the front row. You could have a can or a bottle anywhere else, but on the front row, they actually gave you an empty cup. You had to pour it in the card of that. That was interesting. And there was going to be a table spot because I saw him put the tables underneath the ring. Yep, I saw that. And there's a plant there because you can tell because he just had like 20 signs. And he's actually showing the signs to the production people to, to make sure that he's in focus. That's the plant, folks. And Awesome Kong is the best. She, she's, she was an amazingly sweet, gracious woman. And I think it was because she had somewhat humble beginnings. I know those wrestlers that kind of work their way up uh, that aren't automatically in the WWE. Although there's always that exception. I've heard Roman Reigns, with some people, hit or miss. Uh, again, if you catch him in an airport after a five-hour flight, he's probably not too happy. But if you like see him at like, Burger King, I've heard, like, yeah, he's he, he's He's, he's pretty cool and stuff. So, again, it all depends when you catch him. Um, Tasha Banks, I've heard, is a bitch. But I don't think she spent that much time in the Indies. I'll tell you what. Awesome Kong came out. She wanted to shake hands with people. Wanted to meet people. Awesome Kong is probably the sweetest woman ever. Uh, Adam Hangman Page came out. He was signing autographs for kids. Jake Hagar, I've heard a lot of negative about him. But I'll tell you what, the fact that he was out there, he actually took the time to come out, greet the fans, I mean, give the kids autographs. I have nothing bad to say about Jake Hagar. He's an amazing person. Maybe, I don't know, someone caught him on a bad day or they caught him after a 12-hour flight. Trust me, if you if you talk to Hobo Tom after a 12-hour flight, I'm not necessarily going to be happy. So... Again, maybe it's all on their state of mind, but he was very gracious. Cody came out, greeted the fans. Cody came out. That was awesome. Uh, we saw the one woman in like the interview area or the photo area. Here, oh, that's right. It was um Styles. Monroe versus who was it? Yeah, like Skylar Monroe versus Awesome Kong. But like she was giving, she was doing her pictures and stuff. So that was kind of cool to see. It's always neat to see the behind the stage stuff. And I'll tell you what they had. What I thought was really cool is that they actually had whole vignettes for the Dark Order. And Jungle Express. So this way you kind of get to meet the wrestlers and see, oh, this is a Dark Order. Oh, this is a Jungle Express story. It's a little bit different. I like that because it introduces me to the wrestlers, even though, well, I knew who they were. But my friend I was with, like, oh, that's, they're, they're, they're evil looking. Yeah, they're heels. They're supposed to be. And, like, Luchasaurus? Like, dude, he's huge. That guy's tiny. 
That's good. It's a very good introduction.
I like the fact they have the code of conduct. And one of the things is that they did not say you cannot take pictures or videos. Yes, 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 yes. So they couldn't kick me out even if they wanted to. That's awesome. Uh, so for the most part, it starts off with the dark matches. And this is a complete omnibus. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have time or patience to separate videos. So I'm going to give you everything. Uh, the dark matches, they had one in the beginning, two at the end. Uh, they start to announce the announcers. And for the dark match, it was Excalibur and Chuck Taylor. And the first match, I was shocked that this was the first, that this is actually a dark match. Um, Tully Blanchard was nowhere to be seen. Tully Blanchard isn't coming to Jacksonville. I'm surprised Arn Anderson was there, though. I'll get to Arn later. Uh, so you have Excalibur and Chuck Taylor being the announced scene. And the first match of the night. Oh, wait, my pause here. For Excalibur and Chuck Taylor. For the first match of the night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. So we have Sean Spears and Preston Vance taking on. Wait for it. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. Well, no, not really. The road dog Jesse James was there. But it was Austin and Billy Gunn, the gun club.
We're still looking for that one guy to make this tag team perfect. You have that opportunity. All you have to do is do the opposite of the Jaguars and win. That's supporting a gimmicks infringement with Bullet Club, but that's cool. So it starts off, uh, Sean Spears is in the ring with Billy Gunn. They try to have an ass off. That's pretty cool. And of course, there was the giant. Suck it! So that was fun. Um, this was neat. It's, it's always different. It's, it's one thing to see brother brother combos, it's, I think, rare to see father son combo combos. This was pretty cool. I know every so often in WWE they have them. I want to say The Rock teamed with his father and actually grandfather at some pay-per-view. Charlotte has had at least her father in the corner. Natalia's had Brett in her corner. I think Brett might have wrestled. With the New Heart Foundation with Tyson Kidd. And then I'm trying to think of any other father son combos. I think once they did Bruno San Martino and his son. That was a long time ago though. I think, I think. Probably maybe Randy I know they featured Randy Orton's father. I think Barry Wyndham. I don't think it was with his father. Maybe. I don't know. That, that wrestling logic goes back a while. So again, this was a fun match, though. Um, it's just so cool to see Billy Gunn. You still have it. You still have it. And Billy Gunn just, I think, enjoys talking to the crowd. I think he misses a showmanship of wrestling. It was fun. Uh, Billy Gunn, he also broke the tag rope. Shame on you, Billy Gunn. And I'll tell you what, it was a pretty fun match, though. It's, it's really hard to complain about this match.
Um, eventually, oh, but the job was kicked out of the famous or though. Whoa. And then Austin Gunn has, has a, he does like a five star frog splash. Be caught in the job with that. After a while, um, good back and forth with Sean Spears. You know, he's egging on the sun. The sun gets beat up a lot. Billy Gunn's not going to take it. He's not going to take the bumps. Let's, let's be realistic. Uh, with that, I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. It was a good cheeseburger match. And then we get into the announce crew. The announcement of the of the crew. Taz, the human suplex machine. Is Taz going to be a regular announcer? I think Tony Schiavone actually he is under contract to do. I want to say Georgia football games. I know that a bowl, so they might have had him. So so he might not have been there. But Taz is an amazing announcer. And of course, you have Excalibur. Excalibur. And <laughs> from Oklahoma, Jim Ross, Jr. And I felt bad for them because they looked like they were freezing because they had like their jackets on. the one thing they might not come back to Jacksonville in the winter time or do any open air things in the winter because I think they thought it would be a lot warmer I don't think they realized that because it's next to the river it gets cold that water breeze kicks in that river breeze kicks in and I swear the temperature drops about 20 degrees Because in the summer it, it feels great don't get me wrong in the winter time though I was comfy. I think a whole bunch of other people were not. Actually, a whole bunch of other people were drunk, too, so they didn't care. But so our first match, the intro with Pyro. We have Darby Allen taking on Cody Rhodes with Arn Anderson.
And this match was truly amazing. Um, the only thing that took away from the quality of this match was the fact that you could literally see Arn Anderson reading the script because he would bring out a piece of paper. He'd have he'd have his little notes here. Let's see here, where's some paper? Yep, he'd have his folded notes. Let's see. Here. Oh, okay. Put the paper away. A couple of minutes later, it's like, it looked confusing. Let's say. Okay. So, Arne Anderson kind of detracted from him a little bit because you could tell he was reading the script. Because <laughs> it's like, why does Arne Anderson have that piece of paper? And why is he looking and making strange faces at what's going on in the ring? I'm sure Cody and Darby practiced everything and they, ha they knew what they were doing. I'm sure there were spots where like, I forget, let's just do something on the fly, and Arne Anderson's like, huh? What's, what's, what's that? Yeah, for the most part, it was a classic wrestling match. Uh, Trade of quick pin attempts. This was a... I was shocked. This was a much faster-paced match that took 15 minutes. But that 15 minutes went by really quick. It wasn't like their first match. 
with slow plotting and WA methodical pace. It's actually pretty well paced. It was fast. It was good outside the ring action. Yeah, the figure four came into play. why you're seeing so many videos security didn't care i figured you know what as long as i don't videotape the whole thing i'm good and i was good uh how many copyright strikes i get that's a whole other issue but then uh so Dar darby uh cody would always go attempt the figure four Uh, Darby Allen, when you go after the honest, put him in a Fuji War armbar, really looked to stretch out that arm. It's good to see. And then he did the double Fuji War armbar, which is almost like the Rings of Saturn. Somewhat. Uh, Cody again goes after the legs. Darby Allen's going after the arms. And then Darby Allen had brought his first traditional body bag. But the referee said, uh uh, no body bag for you. No foreign objects in this ring. Uh, there was off the rope, off the top rope, reverse superplex. Whoa, that was pretty cool. Uh, 
The song got a free souvenir because Cody wrote threw his weight belt into the crowd. You know, if you weren't paying attention, I own weight belts. I've had two of them. They're kind of heavy. If you're not paying attention, like, especially that metal buckle will bust you open. You will need stitches. So as long as someone was paying attention when they caught it, good for them. They got a free souvenir. In fact, I'll get to that later. Uh, then Darby. Darby looked like he died once. Um, then he reversed, of course, Cody Rhodes a couple times. Uh, he got slammed on the stage. This was really fun. And there was a super loot to Destroyer. Wait a second. I'll get to this, but everyone's doing Destroyers nowadays. There was a coffin drop, but Cody got his knees up. Darby Allen kicked out of the crossroads. The second coffin drop on the outside, he got the knees up again. And then Arn was on the apron. He told him to put his knees up. And I don't know, that was kind of weird. Arn's like, uh oh, I have to go up there and tell him to put his knees up. But eventually, Cody Rhodes did win. I was really happy because if this would have been another time limit draw, I'm like, we saw this last year. But because Cody won, he picked up his win. It was a little bit different. I'll tell you what, even though Arn Anderson was, was reading the script, unless you're actually paying attention to Arn Anderson, well, like this guy, because Arn Anderson, and Arn Anderson is getting old, too. He probably needs that script. It's like, well, what the hell is going on? What the hell is this body bag doing here? Uh, this was actually an amazing match. This was a filet mignon match. Then we had SCU uh, doing a promo backstage. I caught as much video as I could. It feels weird taking video of video. Um, then Sammy Guevara interrupts. Whatever. And then we had a... What I was surprised at, because I thought it was supposed to be... Uh, Chris Statlander to take on Riho, but what happened, I don't know if there was some issue or something, but it was Nyla Rose v. Britt Baker, and Britt Baker got a cold response, um, Hikaru Shida and Riho in a fatal four-way for the women's title. This was fun, um, Britt. I'll tell you what, I never really realized how skinny Britt Baker is. And Rio's tiny. I mean, Rio's waist is like smaller than Nyla Rose's thigh. And Britt Baker's like skinny, though. Like, you can see, you can see all her muscles, intercostals, and ribs. And it's not because they're well pronounced. It's because there's no cushion there, folks. Whoa! I guess Adam Cole, Adam Cole, baby, had to find someone skinnier than him to date. Because I'll tell you what, she fits the bill. And the other weird thing, her boobies didn't seem as big. It's like, oh, that's her. Oh, whatever. Honestly, if you put her in dent, if you put her in scrub, she'd she'd look like a dentist. Whatever a dentist looks like, I guess.
So the whole part of this match is that there was going to be a table spot because, well, I saw him put the tables there, and Nyla Rose went looking for us at table. Uh, for the most part, they just took turns beating up each other. They tried to double-team Nyla Rose for a little bit. Uh, Hikaru Shida wasn't going to have any of it, though. Uh, because it's no disqualification. Who was it, I think? Who else had Nyla Rose brought in like a chair or something? Oh, no, yeah. Um, uh, uh, she took the belt from Riho, started to club people with said belt. Britt Baker ate the belt across the face. And a car, she just had a kendo stick with her. Don't bring a wrestling belt to a kendo stick fight. Because that's not going to win. So, uh, Hikaru Shida, uh, started to be, oh, an unprotected headshot with a kendo stick. Oh, that looked nasty. My, my friend next to me was like, they can do that? Like, yep. Uh, so, with this, again, you have the strength of Nile Rose. Um, eventually, Riho. And, uh, Shida had a double team there. Then they... Got stuck in the corner. Britt Baker was in the corner. Uh, Britt tried to suplex, but she's not strong enough to suplex Nyla Rose. Uh, she did try to suplex with assistance. Still, Nyla Rose, big for that. Uh, Nyla Rose kind of had a counter for everything, just mainly her strength. And whoa, they, she put Riho through a table. Riho should be dead. I mean, this was a really fun match, actually.
table no sells. Nintendo stick back. I mean, Nyla, she just like deadlift people left and right. Um, a lot of back and forth for a four way tag. And then Riho eventually won because I think Britt Baker softened up Nyla Rose with whatever tooth pulling thing she does. And then Sheeta hit her finisher. And I'll tell you what, folks. Yep. Yeah, that was my 25th time limit. I gotta be careful of that. Riho's dead. Nyla Rose should win that belt. Although I do have a funny feeling that Chris Stracklander, and I know I'm getting her, wrong, her last name wrong all the time, but I think they're setting her up to get the belt. But I'll tell you what, this was a fun match. This was this was actually one of the better women's matches. This was a cheeseburger match. Then we had Trent Breda taking on John Moxley. Wow. I just work for anybody. Here we go, Mark. Mark, can you hear me? I know you got headsets on. Check out, check this out at the top there. We got Moxley's mayhem on. There we go. Elite has fallen. Oh, 
It started off, um, Court Shot and Mossy came through the crowd. Trent Beretta uh, was escorted to the ring by Chuck Taylor because they're the best friends. And Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy just looks so not into it. But that's his shtick, though, I guess. It, was very, it started off really as a tr- very traditional wrestling match uh, until Trent Beretta slapped Moxley. Bad life decision. Um, of course, then Moxie's like, whatever. I just started dishing out chops. Ooh, those thunderous blows of John Moxley. And then they started to trade blows. Uh, Orange Cassidy's ringside. He's just like, yeah, he, he, he could care less. Moxley then hit a superplex and then transitioned into the SCF by Moxley. It's good to see that. Oh, that's right, because in his New Japan match, I'll probably be doing a video Friday night. And that'll be. Actually, I might be doing another one tonight. And that'll be part of my New Japan predictions.
but we'll see how that goes. I have so much stuff. And I can only do uh, white, night one of Wrestle Kingdom because I have to go to work. Then Trent gets tossed into the barricade. They just, Trent likes being tossed in barricades. This is a lot, bar being tossed into barricades is a thing for a lot of AEW wrestlers. And then he did a cut on Mox. Orange Cassidy eventually jumps on the ring, stares at Moxley, jumps off. He's like, whatever. John Moxley versus Orange Cassidy would be, oh, you know it would be a better comedy match? Yano versus Orange Cassidy. Oh, that would be so funny. Uh, Moxley eventually kicked out of the pile driver, which I was shocked at. And then there was a he hit two paradigm shifts, one on the stage, one in the ring. John Moxley wins. And this and this was a good match. I mean nothing bad. This is a cheeseburger match. And then let's see here, I have to see this. Near Dream. Comedy match. Dot dot dot. Yano v. Orange Cassidy. Yep, and of course, people are just trying to press me squeeze. They're like, Mox is gonna kill you. That was pretty good. And uh, Chris Sherrick comes out, does a promo. Uh, next week, Mox is going to give a decision, but I'll tell you what. Jericho got him a pretty sweet-looking car, though. What was it? Uh, something GT. It had the Lamborghini doors. Hey, it also had a personalized license plate. Mox. For the state of Florida. I think John Moxie, I think his legal residence is Nevada, I think. Let's see what Matt thinks of that idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hockey of the sport. Here we go. I'll just show you guys this one. Let's see here. Yeah, near dream comedy match. Yano versus Arn Cassidy. Ugh. Mockery of the sport. That was funny. I just thought that dude. That was pretty. That's pretty good. Um. So I forget this video. If not, here it is.
position of executive vice president of the inner circle. I think you see this. Expensive automobile in America, the Ford GT, worth millions of dollars. Myself and the members of the inner circle have pitched in to buy this for you. We even got a vanity license plate for you, Mox. It's all registered. It's all expensive cars aside, the truth is I've always considered Chris Jericho a friend and a mentor. And out of respect, Chris, I will give you my answer in person next week. And the whole world is going to find out What's in store for 2020? Live on Dynamite next week. Then it was Sammy Guevara came in, and this was kind of weird because this really wasn't announced. He just started to cut a promo, and eventually led to a match between him and Dustin Rhodes.
And this seemed like it was very much contrived and meant to fill time. Man between co commercial break. For the most part, it was very one-sided. Uh, Dustin Reynolds would beat up poor Sammy Guevara until they got to the outside, and then once, once they got to the outside, of course, Sammy Guevara could cheat, and Jake Hagar showed up. He was the distracting factor in this match. Uh, Dustin Rhodes, he, he did a cent on. Uh, Sammy Guevara teased going to the top, said, you guys don't deserve this. Again, Jake Hagar shows up. He's a distraction, and now it's Sammy's turn to beat up for Dustin Reynolds. Then they start to look for stuff under the ring. Goldust brings out a chair. Um, the referee does not allow him to use said chair, which people boo. People boo the referees a lot for some reason. Then Sammy Guevara had this amazing springboard moonsault. 
and something 85. Oh, yeah, the ref stopped the, the Shattered Dreams, which is terrible. Uh, there's a top, ro top rope chin lock, which actually looked really nasty. And then Dustin, of all people, hit a second rope Canadian destroyer. Wow. Oh, no, it wasn't a Canadian. Oh, it wasn't a second rope. I'm sorry. I correct myself. I can barely read my own handwriting. Dustin Reynolds hit a Canadian destroyer on the apron. I don't even know if Dustin Reynolds could do that. Uh, eventually, of course, Dustin Reynolds is seizing the low blow, the shatter dames. But instead, Jake Hagar came in, kicked Dustin Reynolds right in the jimmies, boy. That's not a way to win. Uh, of course, that allowed Sammy Guevara to get the pin on Dustin Reynolds. I'll tell you what, it was a fun match. It, served, it kind of served its purpose. It was, it was weird, though. It was a ham sandwich of a match. The only reason why I say it's a ham sandwich is it just felt disjointed. It might have been put together more for the crowd. It really didn't have a flow of it within the aspect of the show. Um, hey, I can say whatever I want. And then Hagman Adam Page comes out. He's going to be a guest announcer. And actually, there was a <laughs> before the announcement, there was a really good promo by um. Oh, it's not the profits. Private party, and Adam Hagman Page at the bar. Adam Hagman Page is just drinking like straight bourbon, cowboy style, baby. Of course, because they're party people, they don't drink straight bourbon. They have like Cosmopolitans and Shirley Temples and vodka cranberry juice, stuff like that. Uh, then we have MJF cut a promo. That was funny. Thank you. 
you guys don't know how to use words at all, so... Speaking of mouth-breathing morons, hi, Cody! Cody, isn't it so funny how the roles here have been so beautifully reversed? Now you need me! Tina got most of that on film. Uh, he does give his three conditions to fight Cody Rhodes at... Uh, I forget what the name of the next pay-per-view is. I should forget when the pay-per-view is, too. I gotta 
write stuff down on my new calendar. Because if I didn't say it before, Happy New Year's, everyone. I had to change all my calendars, and um, am I confused? Then Adam Hagman Page comes out. <laughs> he walks in front of him. He's like, I'm not walking around. I'm just going to walk in front. He comes there. I don't know if it was real, but he came with, with like a low ball glass in the hand. Whoa. He probably needs some of that, that, that good bourbon-y warmth. And there was a Marco stunt. Marco stunt's a pervert. All he tried to do was to grab poor Dasha's boobies. Even I wouldn't do that. He was like staring at him. He wanted to get a cheap feel on that hug. She was having none of it. Good for you. Should have slapped him in the face too. That was my girl. Marco Stone tossed into Jacksonville Stadium and fed to toss him in the river and feed him to the redfish and catfish and shrimp and who knows what else lived in that river. But yeah, he like initially he like initially tried to just like cuff a field because Dasha looked amazing though. She was in like a red dress with like full cleavage going and enter booble space. So, but no, no means no. And he went for the cheap hug and she's like, whatever. <laughs> Lucius Terps. <laughs> he's so like, he's like, life finds a way. Or it's, again, it's from the BBC show. Really good. And then. There's some weird like promo with Rio, like took like two seconds. It's like, wait a second, is this a is this a botch? They're botching the women's division even more than they do in the ring. That was terrible. AEW do have to learn how to do production. Because when you screw up production like that, it brings you down to triple A level production. And you know what triple A level production is like? Triple A level production is like the Hobo Studio Productions, okay? Listen, for Triple Mania, they spent $10 million on the wrestlers, $5 million on the stage, and 100 bucks for production. I probably as well, I didn't spend more, but in theory, and relatively, I spent more on production value for this probably very poorly done YouTube show. And Triple A did for their one Triple Mania. Last year, Triple Mania was okay. I just wanted to see what they would botch all over the place. But I'll tell you what, this was like a botch production and a half. I'm like, this brings it down to the levels of the Hobo Studio. In fact, I have fewer botches. Wow, I have fewer botches than AEW does. Now, not only my botches are just purely technical. No, I still probably have more, but. AEW is catching up to, to my screw ups. Just always good to see. Mainly my screw ups come from my lack of timing. That's okay. Yeah, I went to Burger King for dinner tonight because it's Burger Thursday. Yeah, I just needed something to. We need something to refresh myself with. Then we have the main event of the evening. 
In this corner, we have Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix and Bastard Pac taking on B Elite. B B the Elite. Elite. Those are the Lucha Brothers and Bastard Pac taking on the Elite, which comprise of Nick and Matt Jackson. The Bucks of Youth. Oh, wait. The Young Bucks, who came out to Young Buck Bucks. And the cleaner, Kenny Omega. So that was amazing.
In fact, it was just an amazing opening sequence because it was he slowly wanted to take the glove off. And he does it like this. And he ripped the glove off. I think he threw it into the crowd. Too. And then, of course, he does the Cero Miedo. And the whole crowd was like, Shh. could hear a pin drop. Cero Miedo. Just enjoy the videos. So again, with this, I mean, it was just amazing. It was this trading of chops and kicks. There was the move, whatever, by Matt Jackson. I don't even know how he did that. I mean, I, stuff I haven't seen. And such flips. I'll tell you what, I told my friend, dude, just just, just enjoy this, because this is amazing. He's like, I didn't realize they could do that in a wrestling ring. It's like, yes, they can. It's like when you first saw Rob Van Dam wrestle in ECW, you're like, I didn't realize he can do this. And you see the stuff, the Lucha Brothers and the Elite do, they have such good chemistry together. And Bastard Pac is just Bastard Pac. And then, I think the only thing is, my only kind of real gripe about this is that 
Pentagon Jr. is showing signs of slowly becoming La Parca, where he would do all the goofy stuff with the dancing. Yeah, I remember La Parca, so, so we'll see. Maybe that just happens to Mexican luchadors in general. Maybe they go through stages. They, they start off as Pentagon Jr., they become La Parca, and then eventually they mature and become Dr. Wagner Jr., Bien, bien, bien. So, yeah, because I was going, well, before I trimmed up last night for work today, I was going all Dr. Wagner with my, I didn't realize how much hair I had in my goatee. That was kind of weird looking. But that's okay. And then, again, they do the double team, the double axe handle by the Young Bucks. was great. Can't, they didn't do more bang for your buck, though, but there was a lot of people, though, in that ring. Uh, Kenny Omega and ate some move. I'll tell you what. Those videos I showed you, I, I, I don't need book. Well, I kind of do because I still have other notes. But for the most part, the videos I showed you were pretty fun. I'll tell you what. This was actually, I think, only because it only lasted like 13 minutes. This was a surf and turf match. And the only reason why it's a surf and turf match is because if this was a if this was a twenty minute or half hour long match, they they get everything. You get all the chocolate. You get all the booze, all the steak. It's all yours. And then we go back to... And then um, Cody comes out to the ring. Cody just looks like he's absolutely enjoying himself. Then we have Skyler, someone, taking on Awesome Kong. Just watch the video. It's a squash match. And the and I guess the jobber's hair is not even worth cutting, by the way.
So with that being said, it was a total squash. I think Skylar got like two moves of offense. Uh, she got leg drop for good measure. I don't know why. Um, Jobber's hair is not worth anything, obviously. Awesome Kong is a sweet woman, but there was that one spot. I don't know if she was going for a gorilla press, but she just had her up in the torture rack and started to like bend her over her neck and just that might have been what she was trying to do. It looks like she was trying to go for a gorilla press, but it wasn't happening. So maybe she got leg drops. Like, this is what happens when you don't go up for the gorilla press. Who knows? It did seem like a little bit extra, because even the ref's like, huh? But that being said, eh, she's had better, Awesome Kong's had better matches. This was a can of soup. And then we had the hybrid two with Kip Savian and SCU. We are the best. SCU. We're number one. SCU. SCU is really fun. SoCal uncensored. And again, it was a very so, so. This was a fun entrance. And Kip Savian was accompanied by uh, Penelope Ford.
So if you didn't see enough of Penelope, of Penelope's Ford booty before, you're going to see a lot of it now. Because uh, I think I go from like ring action to it was the last match of the night. It's just something to send the crowd home happy. Yep. Booty shots. So, but for the most part, during the match, it was a very traditional opening match. Very traditional wrestling going on. Penelope Ford does act as a distraction. And oh my, what is a distraction it is. In fact, my friend's mouth, I think, wouldn't shut for about five minutes once she jumped on the ring apron. I have to control it all. I, I shouldn't be one th to say how to control oneself. So I really don't control myself. And the old college story is I went to a friend's college and they had co-ed by rooms. And at night, some woman, she wasn't a girl, was walking through with like a cutoff t-shirt and panties. And I'm just like, Oh, uh, my friend's like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, oh, uh, Tom, um, pick your job or, oh, uh. but also when I showed up to his room, like, it was funny because the first thing I noticed is that a girl was brushing her teeth in the men's room and another girl came in to his bedroom and started to jump on his bed and she was wearing a bathrobe. I'm like, bathrobe, girl, your your bed. Why are, is this normal? He's like, yeah. I'm like, enough about that. Enough about me, me reminiscing about my college days. Um, so again, then it starts getting a little bit more action. Then everyone into the pool. It starts the spot fest, folks.
And there was a springboard leg drop. That's awesome. It's good to see Christopher Daniels back in the ring wrestling again. Uh, Frankie Kazarian is pretty good. Two, he didn't kill himself because he's been doing very bad, stupid stuff on ring aprons recently. Uh, SEU again, they're, they're, they're double team and triple tag team. Classic stuff. Let's see here. And Jack Evans. Oh, Jack Evans is such a good talker. He can do nothing but chalk. Talk, and I'd be excited. It gets, of course, chaotic. And Helico's still amazing. Finale P. P Ford <laughs> dealt with the fallen angel. That was so funny. She distracted the fallen angel. She distracted everyone, I think. Uh, Kazarian gets the hot tag. Uh, they eventually put the springboard cutter. Like the springboard something cutter. And I'll tell you what. SCU, we are the best. SCU, because Jacksonville is the worst town ever. SCU, they won really a cheeseburger match. And then it was a shirt toss, it was a free shirt toss for everyone. So they were tossing out shirts. They're like, thank you very much to the whole curtain call thing. That was funny. I like it when you have a chance to get free merch, even though they probably would have started a riot or almost started a riot in Jacksonville. And you guys are Southern California, but you've been mighty hospitable. To the tag team champions of the world. And if we were going to call Jacksonville the home of AEW, I'm happy to do it. Probably would have started a full blown right here in Daytona Beach. You start tossing free shirts. There's going to be some fat woman like steps over some little kid for a free t shirt. Trust me, folks. This is Daytona Beach. Stay classy, people. And that was the complete AEW experience. I'd like to thank, one, my friend for giving me those tickets, because if not, I would have been in the hobo section up top. Two, I'd like to thank you, my viewing audience, for watching. Um, there will be more videos posted. Um, what's going on the rest of the week? Eventually, sometime tonight, I'm going to put up my New Year's Day madness. Or my New Year's Evil. Yeah, my New Year's Day Madness video. Which, of course, features the Daytona Beach Bum Fight League. Uh, Friday is going to be a triple feature. It's going to be NWA, SmackDown, and predictions for Wrestle Kingdom. Then Sunday morning... I think that's what it is. Yeah, Sunday morning I'll be covering, and I'll double check on this Friday, but I want to say Sunday morning I'll be covering day one of Wrestle Kingdom. Only because I actually have to work Monday, so I'm not staying up until 3 in the morning on Sunday. Not happening, folks. Saturday is a whole other deal. Sunday, eh -eh. And that's it. And then we get back to the normal Monday. I think I do things Tuesday. Do I work Tuesday? I forget. Yes, yeah, Monday, Tuesday. I think I skip Wednesday because I have to work. Friday.